But first, let's speak to Israeli government spokesperson, David Mensah. Uh, David, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Welcome. Now, the World Central Kitchen worker killings was a horrendous incident. Are you now a prepared to apologise for it? Well, firstly, uh, James, thank you for having me on uh, this evening. Well, of course, from the president to the prime minister, to the chief of staff, which who made an emotional statement, uh, to all sections of Israeli society, we have, of course, apologized because uh, the chief of staff released the preliminary findings of what actually happened. And of course, unfortunately, it was a catastro catastrophic failure of our procedures. And we've had to say that we are extremely sorry for these deaths. And we're sorry because we believe that um, what the work which this age agency were doing is actually very, very important. Uh, they're, they, were, they are a trustworthy partner, and we hope very much that we can continue working with them. But we, of course, understand that for the families of John Chapman, for James Henderson, for James uh, Kirby, these are terrible scenes. And I understand it, exactly how they feel. It's a terrible catastrophe, which we are, of course, uh, sorry for, and we have apologised for. OK, so the apology has come. We talk about whether or not there will be a full investigation, what that means. However, Joe Biden, US president, said to be furious in that call. He's now called for an immediate ceasefire. He says that's essential. Do you agree? Well, I haven't had a, a, a reply. Well, I haven't had a readout of that call yet, so I don't... I can't speak precisely to that call. What I can say is that for five and a half months, the US and the UK and much of the free thinking world have been side by side with Israel because they understand that this genocidal terror army, which crushed through our borders on the October 7th, you know, it's not only our enemy, it's your enemy as well. You know, Iran is unfortunately behind these terrorist organizations. And yes, of course, they're our enemy. They want to destroy Israel. But don't think you're out of the picture because they're after the UK as well. They call uh, they call America the big Satan and they call us the little Satan. But, you know, the UK is in there as well. So okay. none of us should be uh, have rose tinted spectacles that we're doing anything else than battling for civilization. We here in Israel are on the front line of civilization, which means we must be successful. Well, I understand that, but what would you say to Jewish people around the world who have supported and continue to support Israel and totally understand Hamas, a terrorist organisation, totally understand that trying to deal with an organisation that doesn't even recognise that your country exists uh, has caused and perpetrated the most horrendous murder of Jewish people since the Holocaust? We get all of that. However, the actions of the Israeli government is making it increasingly difficult for people um, who are Jewish around the world to support Israel in its endeavours. So, James, I think you're wrong on that point, uh, with the greatest of the respect. Well, I think I'm that sorry. There is how can I be wrong? I'm Jewish. That's how I feel. You are beginning to behave in a way that is no longer responsible to the world, uh, to the world and being accountable for your actions. It's making it look as if you're callous. You're making it really difficult for people to support you. Well, James, you can feel exactly how you want to feel, but I can tell you the polling that we have from the US and from the UK as well, uh, the latest figures we have from the UK, I'm not talking about the, the Jewish community, we're talking about 82% supporting Israel's job to get rid of Hamas. Look, war is an ugly business. This is not a war that we wanted or war that we chose, but unfortunately, we haven't got a choice. You know, there's a reason why um, uh, there aren't many Hamas spokespeople going out onto the media. And I'll tell you why that is, is because every time they're interviewed, they say the same thing. They say, we want to do October the 7th again and again and of again. Of course. We, and you we, know get, what, we James, get that. We get that. James, we understand. Listen to, we, just sorry. listen to this point. James, this is important, James. We believe them, and you should too. I, I, don't, I have no doubt. I have no doubt. I understand what you're yeah. saying in respect of Hamas, and I understand that they would do it again, and there are plenty of people here in the UK who have extremely unsavoury views about Jewish people, about Israel, about the state of Israel. All I'm saying is that because of the nature of what's happened, 33,000 people uh, have now lost their lives. Many of those people are civilians. And because of what has happened in the last few days, I understand seven people may not necessarily be, in the great scheme of things, a huge number. But it is an indicative toll that Israel is no longer...
being as careful as it should be, and until or unless we have a proper justification as to what went wrong, surely that means that Israel has to change its stance to make sure that people stay with you and to support your endeavours. James, first things first, uh, we've all of us got to stop parroting Hamas figures. You know, James, um, Hamas is an organisation that thinks that Jews, that's you, James, and me, that we, we're, we're descendants of pigs and monkeys. That's part of their ideology. And that they're also, we know as well, that they beheaded babies, that they raped women, that they performed the most obscene uh, uh, massacres, that they gave their soldiers uh, a script in Hebrew to say, pull down your trousers, the words, how to say it in Hebrew, take your underwear off, spread your legs. They used rape as a method uh, of, of this terrible war. They're, after, they're not us after me, James. They're after you as well. They're after all right-thinking people. They're after democracies, which is why I say again, we're on the front line of this war. Back us or not, we've got to go and finish this job I, because this is not a faraway land of which we know little. This, this is on I, our doorstep. I get it. I this understand. This is right here, right here. I'm sorry. I get it and I understand. But I think the fact that um, you or indeed others who, who make this commentary without making a better effort to ensure that civilians are not brought into this. And I get and I understand that Hamas are putting James, them we, in the can way. Can we talk about that? I, I understand that. The, the but I also uh, understand when I see an aid convoy which has been targeted and it looks like something has gone horrendously wrong. I mean, what, for example, if the US did withdraw its support for Israel, does that make you change your plan or does your plan continue as, uh, as before? Well, obviously, that's a question you'll have to put to the to put to the U.S. I'm not a spokesman for the U.S. government. I'm a spokesman for the Israeli government. But uh, I think I want to make a couple well, of very important points. I asked uh, you, what, would, what would the Israeli government do? If the U.S. withdraws its support for you, what would you do? So you, you're acting as if you're speaking as if we have a choice in this matter. You know, this country has mobilized. These aren't uh, our soldiers which are fighting, of which we've lost 600 of them, unfortunately, 600 of our, of our brightest and best. Uh, you know, the whole world, the whole of this country has mobilized. Everyone's in uniform. There is almost wall to wall support for this battle. And I say to you again, it's for the simple fact is we have not got a choice. This barbarism must be stood up to. There is only one Jewish country in the entire world. There are 50 or so Muslim states. There are umpteen number of Christian states. There is only one safe home for uh, the Jewish people. I and this country was terribly better attacked. Than, no. I understand better than most that that's the case. And I understand why it is that you wish to go after Hamas. And I totally agree. And I support the original words of our Prime Minister and Foreign Secretary and indeed Joe Biden, who said we will support you. However, if you lose that support because of the actions of your military, do you not see what that does to Jewish people around the world? And do you not think that you need to amend your uh, approach, even though the aim of eradicated Hamas and making sure that never happens again is a noble one. So the reason there is this outroar, this uproar in the whole world is because of some of the images uh, which have been out there. Uh, and they are uh, nasty images, but of course they are the images which Hamas wants you to see. The, the fact of the matter is, let's talk about facts, because I've always been very clear that Talk TV as an organisation is, is better than the BBC. They don't just parrot the Arabism uh, uh, propaganda which comes out so many to so many places and reaches us here. Talk TV is different. Let me give you the facts. Now, we believe that when the dust settles on this conflict, it will be it will be clear that we have achieved something which is completely unprecedented. We have killed the least number of civilians as compared. Unfortunately, look, of course, all civilian deaths are a catastrophe. We've killed the least number of civilians in comparison with the terrorists. Remember this fact, James. The terrorists themselves hide amongst civilians. They don't wear uniforms. They build their terror tunnels on top of, uh, underneath hospitals and schools. It's not the other way around. They didn't uh, build the school and then put the tunnel underneath. They put the tunnel underneath and put the school on top, which means they want, they want you to see pictures of hungry Palestinians. So when we try and push aid, when we try and pre uh, prevent damage to the Palestinians, when we try and protect mm. ordinary Palestinians, it's Hamas that fires on them. When they fire rockets at us, 20% of them land in Gaza on top of 
Palestinians. This is an evil organization. You must not fall for the images. We, those, those are the images which Hamas want to see. And if we images. have to go it alone, I don't if we have we fall... to go it alone, James, the I answer don't... to your question okay. is if we have to go it alone, we will go it alone. We don't want to go it alone. We okay, will go fine. it alone. Because I, I say again, I hear we have you. no other choice. I hear you loud and clear. Um, but I think there are people who are watching this who will despair at the fact that Israel is perhaps not listening to some of the issues, even though I totally agree and understand with the threats that you talk about and the threats that continue. David Mensah, Israeli government spokesman, thank you very much indeed for joining us on Talk TV. It's much Good appreciated. Good to be with you, James. Thank you very much. Now.